Liquidity made simple. Let's just dive straight in. Right, so what is liquidity? Liquidity is about how easily and quickly you can buy or sell a currency without affecting its price. Imagine you're at a big market where lots of people are buying and selling fruits. If you can quickly sell your apples at a good price because many people want them, then apples are a very liquid item in this market. When trading, a currency is considered highly liquid if there are lots of buyers and sellers in the market all the time. This means you can trade large amounts of that currency quickly at prices close to the market rates you see on your screen. The most liquid currencies are ones like the US dollar, the euro, the Japanese yen, because they are traded all over the world, so there's always someone willing to trade them. So trendline liquidity, the big players in the markets will often engineer certain types of price action in order to encourage traders into the markets. So let's have a look at trend lines. So here we see price pushing to the upside, and then ultimately we then see price breaking down past the recent low. Here is our trend line. Here we can see we've got one, two touches on this trend line. Now this, what I'm talking about here is not saying trend lines do not work because I do know people that trade off trend lines and they have made great success from it. But what we need to understand is even the most successful strategies out there, whether it's SMC, trend line, support and resistance, anything like that, at some points, those strategies or those trading styles will become liquidity at some point. Now, because we can see the buyers are in the markets around this point and this point and this point, in order for the larger institutions to continue pushing price in the direction they are intending to, they will need to grab liquidity at some point. So they will need to then load up some sell orders, which will then anticipate traders to be in the markets around this point when price touches this trend line once again. Once this area is then broken, these trend line traders will likely then be looking to trade the retest of this. So they will be looking for price to come up, touch the other side of the trend line and continue going short. Now in situations like this, if it's the intentions of the higher institutions, they could then continue pushing price back to the upside, breaking past this high, taking liquidity in two points. First off, the buyers that were looking to buy off of this trend line bounce here. And secondly, the traders that were looking to trade the retest of the trend line. So when price breaks through down here and pushes to the upside, touches the trend line again. Imagine if this line is extending out here. All right, they are looking to trade the retest of this trend line. And when price pushes to the upside, they then get taken out. That is the liquidity taken from the markets. So let's have a closer look at this example of what we can see happening now. So we've had the origin of the trend line just here, which is the most extreme low. We can then see we've had another touch of the trend line here. We've had another touch of the trend line over here as well. Now, if we extend this line up, we can see exactly how this has behaved. We can see price has touched this trend line at this point once more. And at this point is where we're starting to see this trend line fail. We can see price is trying to break through it. So there's one series of liquidity that has been taken by liquidating those traders that are looking to trade on this trend line. And as you can see, price has come back up and it's retested this trend line. Now, in this example, the uh, break and retest of this trend line has clearly worked out. As we can see, price is pulled back and then it's continued dumping from there. Now, with a trend line, it, it doesn't need to break through and then take liquidity on both ends like the previous example we explained. It can happen either once or we can have both of those situations occur. Now, this is something that will happen on every single time frame. At the moment, we are currently on the four hour time frame, and this is UK 100. So if you wanted to revisit and have a look at this, this is January at the beginning of this year. But quite simply, what we can see has happened is at some point this trend line has failed and the trend has then shifted. So this is where the liquidity has been taken at this point. Another common area of liquidity is support and resistance. So here we can see a very typical looking support and resistance area. Now what we can see by this red line is, first off, this was acting like a support level. We can see price reacting from this level, pushing up and eventually it has broken through. Price is then consolidated underneath reacting from this point, which is then becoming a resistance level. Now, how this then becomes a liquidity point is in a couple of ways. The traders that are looking to trade the rejections of this support level will be looking to trade long here. They will be looking to trade the reaction and hoping that price will push to the upside. Now, when this fails and price breaks through, support and resistance traders would then be looking at this as a resistance level. So they would then be looking to trade the reactions from here. 
Now, as you can see, if he was trading a short here, he would have been okay for a period of time. We'd have had another reaction, probably up to break even, and then a further push. All right, before pricing ultimately pushes up, grab some liquidity. Now, this liquidity here is fuel. We would have taken out stop losses at this point, and then ultimately pushing further down in the intended direction. So let's have a look at an example of this. So what can we see happening here? Now, what we've got here, we've got a resistance level. We've got relative equal highs here. But what we can see happening is this price level has been responded to multiple times. Okay, we can see if we look to the left, we have price reacting to this, bouncing off of this support level, trying to break through, failing to break through, then pushing back to the upside. This is then encouraging traders to take a long position. These traders that will be looking at this rejection and seeing price breaking back to the upside and failing to close below this support level, they'll be looking to trade long in this situation. Now what we could then see is we've then gone for a final test of this. We pushed up, failed to create more highs, and then ultimately we then push back to the downside. Now in turn, what's happened here is as prices come back up to this level, we would see traders in the markets looking to take a short around this point because this support area has now turned into a resistance. Now, depending on the specific requirements of a support and resistance trader, they might be looking to trade either here or they'll be looking for another test of this area to make sure that price is actually going to react from this. And as you can see, price has then pushed further to the downside and this is going to cause a lot of FOMO traders to jump into the markets thinking that the move has happened without them. And then those traders looking to jump in on this again we can see prices then pull back. Depending where people's stop losses are, they could be somewhere above these highs, they could be way above here, but especially those greedy traders that will be looking to have a tighter stop loss and capitalize on this move, it's very likely they could have been taken out around this point. Now, it's important to note that stop losses are not the only form of liquidity. And it's a common misconception that liquidity is only people's stop losses, when that's not the actual case, All right? So, for whatever reason, we may have some traders around here that were trading long. They could have been looking for a change of character in the market, trading along here. They could have been looking for longs for all sorts of many reasons. Could be an EMA reason, could be another support level down here, could be various reasons why. Now, another form of liquidity is people to take profits. Okay, so if there is people looking to take a long up here and they were aiming for this structural high here, when their take profit is hit, that is them selling their position back to the markets. So if they are selling their long positions, the institutions that are looking to sell at this level have then grabbed some liquidity, which means those long positions are now being sold back to the market and it can then help fuel that push to the downside. Another form of liquidity is order blocks. Some people refer to this as transactional liquidity, but either way we can refer to them both as the same thing. Now, one of the most common things I see, especially from traders that are trading smart money concepts, is they are solely focused on just order blocks. And another characteristic they look out for is a change of character. So let's have a look at a situation where a smart money trader could be taken out as liquidity. So here we see a bullish trend pushing to the upside. We've got a break of structure. We then have a new higher high formed. We then see price break into the downside, breaking past this low, in turn creating a change of character, which means that the markets has now formed a new low. And the anticipation from a lot of smart money concept traders is trading the reaction of a order block that has caused this change of character. So if we had an order block up here, these traders would then be looking for shorts around here, hoping that they are going to catch the beginning of a new trend. Now, the common problem with this is, is a lot of traders will be looking for a change of character anywhere in the markets. If we are looking for a change of character, we want a couple of things in mind. We want to either see a reaction from a higher time frame POI. So we need this high to be reacting to a higher time frame POI somewhere to the left over here in order for that to have a higher probability of working out. If we have nothing to be reacting from and no reason for price to react from this, then it's quite simply going to be a liquidity grab here, pushing price to the upside, then grabbing liquidity from those early impulsive sellers in the markets before price continues pushing to the upside. And those short traders in here are then left licking their wounds, wondering why the markets have gone against them. When in actual fact, nine times out of ten they are just looking for any old change of character on any time frame well so what do we see happening here first off we can see we've got a break of structure here price is aggressively pushed to the upside we've retraced pushed up again we've broken past this structural high 
and eventually we've broken past an internal low. We could then see new lows being formed here, an internal low, which has then seen price push further to the downside. We've then broken past this low, which has caused this high up here. Now, this is usually where a lot of traders will be jumping into a change of character trade prematurely. Now, what they can see here, we do have an order block just here. And what they'll be looking to trade is the reaction from this order block, hoping that the markets are going to continue pushing to the downside after we've had this change of character just here. Now, the problem with this one here is this change of character is not significant at all. This is in a completely random place in the markets. We have had no significant reaction to anything around this price level. And quite simply, all this is engineered to do is to catch those early sellers in the markets, hoping that we're going to push down from here. So the key takeaway point here is if we are looking to trade a change of character, we need to ensure we have a valid reason for that change of character to play out. If we are looking at a short term bullish trend like this, and then looking at the very first change of character that occurs and jumping on the very first order block, then it's extremely likely we're going to be taken out as liquidity and have our stop losses hit. Now, what I'd like you to understand is that this list of liquidity examples is not exhaustive. This is just a small handful of examples of where we can anticipate liquidity to be. Now, if you'd like me to go into a little bit more detail about how we can find liquidity, how we can avoid being trapped in these liquidity points, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. That will then tell me that the, you have found this video useful, and it will also help the YouTube algorithm push this out to more people that need to see this. Now, if you have any questions regarding this topic, please feel free to drop a comment below. But as always, safe trading.